Hello and welcome to the installation video for the Unitrend Storage Inventory Tool. This free tool is available from Unitrends.com via a simple registration form. Once you fill out that form, you will receive a welcome email. This email is where we'll start today's video with me receiving the email and walking through the remaining steps to install and configure the storage inventory tool. Here's my webmail. I can see that I have just received an email from uh, freetools at unitrends.com. Uh, this email will walk me through, uh, for my order number, um, how to download the appliance file, uh, which I'll then be importing into my virtual environment. Uh, it will, uh, includes the link to the virtual appliance file itself as well as temporary credentials I'll need to log in to access the download link. Uh, from there, once I have the file downloaded, I'll be importing it into a virtual environment. And uh, right here on the email, you've got all of the various credentials you'll need to start up the VM and access the uh, configuration screens. And if you need additional documentation, that's available on the same portal. And some additional uh, supplementary information is also included in the email uh, if you have any questions. So I'll click on the link to go log in to the portal to uh, access the download. And basically I'll just be using this temporary username and password to log in to the portal. Once I'm in the portal, I'll fill out a brief uh, registration form, uh, accept the license agreement, and then access the download link. So I'll just fill out my contact information here, um, address, email address. Uh, the email address I put in will be used as my, my new username for the support portal. And you can change that if you'd like by clicking on that box, but by default, uh, whatever you put in for your email address, that's what you'll, uh, you'll get as your username. I'll put in my password and hit update, and accept the uh, license agreement, and then update that. And now I'm at the main screen of the support portal. So I have the link at the top there to download the appliance itself, as well as additional links that will allow me to uh, modify my registration information, add users, uh, access documentation, and so forth. So I'll click on the download link, and that download will start up. And that download is going there uh, through my browser. Uh, I'll pause now, and we can come back when uh, the download is completed. So the download has been uh, has finished. Here we are in my vCenter uh, client. So I'm just going to choose deploy OVF template from the file menu, browse to the unzipped uh, OVF file that I've downloaded from the portal, and just walk through the steps of the deployment wizard. I'll choose the host I'd like to put it on, as well as the uh, data store I'll be storing the virtual appliance on. Uh, I can either thin or thick provision capacity on this server, either one is fine. And then I'll click the power on after deployment button so it just starts right up. Uh, one thing you might want to make note of is if you need to be on a different VM network than the default, you might want to change that. So the deployment process takes about four or five minutes to run through. So we'll let that run and then uh, pick up again when the deployment is complete. Okay, so the deployment has completed. There's my new VM there. So I'll open up the console and log in with the credentials that were included in the welcome email. As soon as I log in, I'll be presented with the install wizard for the storage inventory tool. 
Uh, from here, we set the local time zone, configure the network, uh, and, uh, and install the storage inventory tool software onto the virtual appliance. And finally, we finish up by adding the credentials for the assets we're going to look at. So I'll hit the Enter key to continue. And step one is to set the time zone. So I will uh, again hit Enter to continue. And I'm presented with a list of regions. I'll choose the Americas. is number two. And then from there, I'll have the list of countries in my region. You might need to scroll down to see the entire list. And I'll scroll down to the United States and pick that. It's right there, number 49. And then I'll choose my time zone. So for me it's Eastern Time, so I'll enter that. Uh, the changes I've made are confirmed and I'll just hit yes to continue. So from here uh, it's time to get this uh, virtual appliance on the network. So we'll be adding the IP address, uh, network mask, DNS servers, and so forth. So uh, this server by default is set up for DHCP uh, you could let it run as that. Uh, it's recommended that you use a static IP. So I'll hit enter to continue and enter the IP address I've chosen for this virtual appliance. And then the subnet mask. And the gateway IP. For the DNS servers, uh, you can add a comma separated list of DNS servers here. I'll just put in two, but additional servers are supported. And then the network domains. Uh, this is also a comma separated list. Uh, in my case, I'll add two and then continue. Okay, I have the option of changing the host name. So uh, for this box, I'll choose a host name of Unitrans. It can be anything you'd like. Uh, it's just for convenience. So there are my network settings that I've selected. I'll hit yes to confirm those. And now I'm ready to configure the time servers. Uh, the virtual appliance already comes pre-configured with some virtual uh, with some time servers. So. I'll just keep those. Uh, I can hit enter to continue to set up additional time servers, uh, B to go back, or S just to skip and keep the ones that are already configured. Uh, finally, we're ready to install uh, the current software code onto this virtual appliance. So I'll hit enter to continue. And uh, it will now prompt for the username that was chosen during registration. Again, that's by default the email address that's entered during the registration process. Uh, and then uh, it will validate uh, the order. And then I'll uh, continue by confirming that. And the current code base will download and install onto the virtual clients. This just takes a couple of minutes to download and install. And then at that point, we're ready to enter the various credentials we would need to, to access and, and, and gather information on uh, our environment. So there it is wrapping up the installation. And that's all set. So last step. Uh, back here at the VM itself is to enter the credentials uh, that we'll be using to, again, to gather information on the uh, storage assets, the uh, servers, 
uh, virtual center servers, fiber switches. So I can hit enter here to continue cre uh, creating the credentials. So I'll do that and you'll be presented with a list of all the different types of uh, platforms supported by the tool. Uh, I know I have some Windows credentials I want to add. I've got some NetApp credentials here and I've got uh, some VMware credentials as well that I'd like to add. Uh, that's the extent of my environment here. So I'll choose option one to add the Windows credentials. And I have the option of either hitting enter at this point to create default credentials or, by, or to specify credentials for a particular uh, asset or domain. Um, I've chosen a default set of credentials. So uh, for my Windows credentials, I'll add the domain, then backslash, and then the username, uh, and then the, the passwords. When this is done, uh, it will offer to uh, add additional credentials if necessary. For example, if you've got multiple domains and you want to uh, add additional Windows credentials, in my case, I'll answer no to that. And then I'll enter yes to update the credentials. So I also have some NetApp credentials, so I'll add them the same way, just by choosing the uh, appropriate number, hitting enter to set some default credentials, and then entering the username and password. And hitting yes to update those credentials. And then finally, I'll add my VMware credentials to, uh, so I can have a look at my vCenter server. I'll add those in. Hit yes, and we're all set. Now, we can also list the credentials we've already added in by hitting L. And that shows me that I've created Windows, NetApp, and VMware credentials. So I'll quit out of this. And now we're ready to hop onto a browser um, to, to wrap up the configuration of the appliance. And by doing that, uh, to do that, we'll just be pointing at the IP of the virtual machine. So here we are logging into the storage inventory tool. First step is to name our company. So I'll name this ABC Co. And the configuration screen includes help text that's numbered uh, to guide you in the process of configuring the tool. And over on the left, you'll see the object we just named, ABC Co. From there, we can set global uh, variables uh, and configure the scheduler. Underneath that, we have a region and a data center. Additional regions and data centers can be created, uh, and additional data centers can be created under each region. Uh, from the data center, we can add additional assets or edit the data center itself. So for this region, I'll change its name to Asbury. And for the data center, I'll change that to dev. And scroll down to the bottom to update those changes. And now at the data center, I can add the assets I um, added the credentials for earlier. So I'll start with the, the filer. Uh, when we're adding filers and SAN arrays, we'll want to make sure to include the vendor in the model. So this is a NetApp box, and it is a simulator. So I'll scroll down and pick that. And then um, we'll be adding the IP address. And scroll down and create that. And there it is under the data center. And now we'll go back and create the vCenter server. For vCenter servers, all we need is the name and the IP address. So I'll create that. And now it's time to schedule the discovery. There they are under my data center. Up at the top of the tree there, I have the option to configure the discovery scheduler. Uh, select the Run Usage Share Discoveries box. That will tell it to also scan the servers and hit the Run Now link and click Update. And now the scheduler will uh, begin within a few seconds. 
uh, the NetApp simulator and the vCenter server will get queued up uh, for discovery. Uh, in real-world situations, arrays take about two to five minutes to discover. Uh, vCenter servers take about 30 seconds. Uh, fiber switches take about 30 seconds as well. So the discovery is running. I can see that the filer is, is running uh, right now, and the vCenter is queued up. Okay, so the, the filer is complete. vCenter will start any second now. And it's already done. So a few more steps for the discovery to, uh, to run, and then we'll be into the main UI of the tool and ready to start looking at reports. So we'll hit OK to that, and this will take us into the main UI of the tool. And it opens up to a overview of the data that was collected. Uh, you can see that there are various tabs um, outlining some of the details that were discovered. Uh, there are also links to uh, detailed reports about various uh, aspects of the environment under that menu. And then over on the left, we can view the discovered assets by type. And we can see that uh, servers, ESX servers, uh, additional objects have been discovered automatically. Now uh, we can also view by region or by vendor. So that concludes the uh, steps involved with configuring and scheduling a discovery. Uh, and now that we've done that, we can see that if I click on an object in here, I've got uh, detailed information at my fingertips for this system. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, there are additional videos in this series that outline uh, how to get the most out of the storage inventory tool. Uh, we hope you enjoy those as well. And thanks again for your time.